Medical workers at Taipei City Hospital hope to reduce infection risk in communities. Let's take a look at the necessity of a third phase for vaccine development. Welcome to Diet Headlines, I'm Hu Chao. Thank you for joining us. At the community screening station, medical workers aim to spot COVID-contracted individuals in order to reduce the overall mortality rate. Taipei City Hospital started providing community screening services at the beginning of June, as it is hoped that the potential COVID-contracted individuals can be identified early, lessening the risk within the community. Starting June, Taipei City Hospital took on community screenings, serving 7,100 citizens per month while screening 300 specimens per day. For people lining up at the scene, they'll feel that they have been in line for a long time. From June 1st to now, we have screened 7,000 individuals, with 30, 40 people tested positive. Therefore, it's about 0.5 percent. In the past, if one is tested positive without symptoms, they can be quarantined at home. During the stage, Li Mengrong will keep contacting the patient, a 90-year-old senior with dementia, was sent to the hospital after Li Mengrong discovered her light symptoms. We continue to care for this grandmother, and since she stopped eating at night, I told her this isn't good. So we brought her to the hospital, and now she has fully recovered. At the station here, medical workers mainly serve community residents with no symptoms, and citizens who paid for screening. Though the risk is lower than ICU screening stations, medical workers still undergo a lot of pressure. We're afraid that some viruses will spread to people in my home. My parents are in Taichung, and I haven't been back for a month. I also don't know when I can go back home. Medical workers at the community screening stations must treat serving citizens as their priority, hoping to find COVID-affected individuals early on in order to control the pandemic. At the beginning of June, New Taipei City's Department of Health reported a case in which Granny Liao needed a medical bed. At the time, the senior had an oxygen saturation of 40%. After Taipei Tzuchi Hospital took her into an ICU, the senior was moved to a dedicated ward after her situation stabilized. Now she is ready to leave the hospital. 75-year-old Granny Liao's emergency has been sent to hospitals and the Department of Health. She's in need of a hospital to look after her. The superintendent says that though medical beds are limited over at Taipei Tzuchi Hospital, we actually are not willing to give up on any patients. Granny Liao was sent to an ICU at Taipei Tzuchi Hospital, and after 15 days of intubation, doctors decided to move the tubes while introducing HFNC and physical rehabilitation. It is agreed upon by our team that we will visit the senior every day. We allow the senior to sit up and we will pat her back. We also talk to her and help her do long rehabilitation. We treat her as our mother. Under proper and sincere care, Granny Liao is moving to dedicated ward. Since Granny Liao stayed in bed for over 20 days, her stamina deteriorated as she is unable to eat and fluid by herself. In order to elevate her quality of life, the medical team came up with a rehabilitation plan. At first, she will sit up straight. The second day, for 20 minutes. The third day, standing up. And the fourth day, she will be walking. From the first step to the three-meter mark, it should be fine. A week later, Granny Liao is able to walk on her own, and she also reached the standards to go out of quarantine. Before she departed from the hospital, nurses gave her kind reminders. Not giving up on any chances to save a life, the medical team at Taipei Tzuchi Hospital will save more people in need. In Taiwan, Daling Tzuchi Hospital's rheumatologist Chen Ningxiu has come to Taiwan from Malaysia 11 years ago. Having graduated from Tzuchi University, she is now serving at the dedicated wards. Although she has fear for the COVID virus, she still takes on the challenges to safeguard patients' lives. <laughs> Chen Ningxiu, who is treating rheumatology patients, 
has graduated from Tsuji University. She has come to Taling Tsuji Hospital four years ago. During the pandemic period, she is serving at the dedicated wards. Do not underestimate ourselves. If you take actions, you can do a lot of things, improve many things, and help the team. Although Chen has received the first dose of COVID vaccination, she still has the fear of the disease. Despite that, she faces the challenges with courage. I am grateful that I'm a medical worker. While most people can only stay at home, watch TV, and feel worried about the pandemic, as a medical worker, I can do my job and help the pandemic end sooner. During the pandemic period, she is following the footsteps of senior doctors and fighting the pandemic. Vaccine development normally must go through three phases, as the third phase alone takes about one or two years to complete. The first phase aims to find an antigen. The second phase tests the safety levels of the vaccine, and the third phase evaluates the overall protectiveness of the vaccine. What are the three phases for specifically? Furthermore, strict requirements are set in order for pharmaceutical companies to provide safe and protective vaccines. Follow a report as you learn more about the vaccine development. The debate regarding vaccines not undergoing a third phase in terms of testing for protection is still ongoing. As of now, there's no vaccine that receives an EUA based on the second phase result, which aims to provide reports on immunity and safety of a vaccine. For example, if I have an antibody, after receiving the vaccine, I will now question if the vaccine is enough to protect me. I won't know because there is no data from the third phase. Vaccine development is a strict process, as a series of animal experiments, along with a third phase human clinical trial, are required. Firstly, antigens have to be picked in order to start the animal experiments. Using different doses of vaccination to pick up antigens, and to observe the immunity responses from each. Most importantly, the process also requires observing the animals if there are any toxic reactions. To vaccine experiments, we can choose the animals, and most commonly we hear about lab rats. In the vaccine animal experiments, we have to choose primate. We hope by entering the human participant phase, we can receive human-like responses beforehand during the animal experiments. After animal experiments, the most effective antigen and dosage will be proposed as a human-involved clinical trial will begin. The first phase normally picks a person with normal immunity, about 10 people with the main purpose of evaluating the safety levels of the chosen antigen. The second phase includes more people, around 100 people, and with different dosages. It is hoped that immunogenicity will be developed. Immunogenicity is basically the success of developing the antibody in our body. The third phase aims to test the first and second phases, antigens and dosages, to test the effectiveness. Therefore, the main goal is to confirm the protective and safety levels of the vaccine. At the third phase, a double-blind experiment is held, splitting participants into a vaccine group or a placebo group. Around 1,000 participants is required, as there must be a diversity amongst people. This is to make sure that the vaccine is applicable to most people. After we give vaccines to the vaccine group and the placebo group, they will be exposed to an infected environment. Therefore, we can analyze the risk of infection between the two groups, then we can calculate the level of protectiveness. In order to avoid bias during a clinical trial, and to further avoid human intervention, a blind experiment is designed to avoid bias. Single-blind experiments are like covering the eye for the participant. They won't know if they received a normal vaccine or a placebo vaccine. Double-blind experiments involve the doctors, in which they too do not know what vaccines the participants received. The last stage is the unblinding phase, which refers to, after data analysis, the vaccine in the placebo group is revealed to researchers. At the beginning, 
From the beginning of the blind experiment to the unblinding phase, the real vaccine and the placebo vaccine look exactly identical. It's hard to tell which group you're in. Normally, after passing the third phase, proving the protective and the safety levels of a vaccine, a company can now ask for audit before selling. But during 2020, the pandemic broke out as companies like AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, and Janssen provided vaccines with an EUA. But these vaccines have passed the first and second phase, and are undergoing the third phase involving clinical trials. The United States FDA insists that the third phase must include 3,000 or more participants, with an observation record of at least two months. After the EUA passes, a company must finish the third phase in order to complete the process. If made in Taiwan vaccines ought to be recognized internationally, there's still a long way to go. In Indonesia, the government has sped up COVID-19 vaccinations. They have also set up vaccination stations at the nursing homes. They provide vaccination shots to nursing home residents, caregivers and management staff, so everyone can be protected against the virus. Seniors who are more than 60 years old are the priority group to receive COVID vaccination shots. The nursing home in Bogor has worked with the Ministry of Health to provide second doses of COVID vaccinations to 250 nursing home residents, caregivers and management staff. In order to receive the vaccinations, the residents have to register, undergo health screening, measure temperature and blood pressure, and answer health-related questions. If they qualify, the seniors can receive the vaccinations. After receiving vaccinations, the seniors must stay at the waiting area for 30 minutes to see if there are negative reactions. The nursing home has applied for vaccination doses from Bogor Ministry of Health. I am grateful that our application was approved as we can receive vaccinations. The seniors at the nursing home are very happy because after completing the vaccination, they would have protection against the virus. When we received the first vaccination doses, we are very happy that the government cares about us. Today we are receiving the second doses and this makes us feel healthier. We still need to follow pandemic prevention measures. Friends, let's get vaccinated so we can prevent contracting the virus. Getting vaccinated is good for the health. The specialist at Bokor Health Bureau said that after seniors received first vaccination doses, they did not show any problems. If they discovered that the seniors are having any health problems, the caregivers at the nursing home would send them to a nearby hospital. We have named the place Nursing Home Vaccination Station. We want to make it convenient for seniors to get vaccinated, especially seniors who cannot go to local health centers. So we do our best to vaccinate the seniors. During the vaccination process, we use the online health platform and we mobilize 20 medical staff members. Malaysia was once a role model in fighting the COVID pandemic. However, because the number of confirmed cases increased drastically and the rate of vaccination is slow, it dropped in the ranking by Bloomberg News. As Malaysia's medical system reached an all-time high demand, it is hoped that the situation may be under control. Let's take a look at how Malaysia is fighting the virus.
截至今天中午十二点，国内新增三个人染病，全都属于境外输入，也就是说，今天取得零本土感染个案。新冠肺炎疫情相当严重的沙巴，今天早上许多选民依旧踊跃出门投票。After Sabah election in October of 2020, the third wave of a pandemic broke out, leading to the near collapse of the medical system. When medical system collapses, the medical needs are higher than the medical supplies. As a result, a large number of patients pass away because of the lack of proper care. They're not only COVID-19 patients, but patients of other dangerous diseases. Of course, the medical system in Malaysia has not collapsed. However, we cannot deny the medical system in Malaysia is a bit tight. More than 70% of intensive care units at most hospitals have been in use. The first reason is that the virus is getting stronger, so treating the disease is not easy. Many patients pass away at the fifth stage, where the medical system has been saturated. For several months, the medical cases continue to grow at a fast speed. The hospital wards are full, and there's a lack of medical supplies and manpower. The hospitals taking in COVID-19 patients have grown from 118 to 140. The Ministry of Health has also set up field hospitals to relieve the pressure of hospitals. As the number of patients slowly increases, we are increasing intensive care units. However, first of all, we do not have enough equipment. Secondly. We do not have enough doctors who are well trained or specialists. Thirdly, there is not enough trained nurses. Under such circumstances, the recovery rate of our patients is not very good, especially when they reach the fourth or fifth stage. They need to enter intensive care units to be under observation. If they lack oxygen, they will need to use oxygen generators. There are actually different kinds of oxygen generators. Under the fastest condition, they can only use the low-end machines. The problem is that we do not have enough oxygen generators, so the doctors need to make a choice. They have to choose patients who have a higher chance of recovery. In Malaysia, the medical system has been overburdened. The government has extended the lockdown, hoping to repress the pandemic through controlling the people's contacts. If the number of confirmed cases drops below 4,000 on a single day, or if 10% of people receive vaccinations, Malaysia will have the chance of lifting the lockdown. During the pandemic period, the Penang City Clinic Governors. And the patients and nurses at Penang City Dialysis Center wrote cards for frontline medical workers. They expressed their gratitude for the medical workers and hope they will keep up the good work. Who is this? And how about this one? It's the the virus. Virus. How they fight the virus? Virus. <laughs> Drawing pictures and writing down their best wishes. These are the thoughts of Penang City kindergarteners for the frontline medical workers. With the patience of a camel and the courage of a lion, they safeguard the life of patients. The patients at Penang Dialysis Center also write down their best wishes, hoping to show their love for the frontline workers. Why do I say they have the patience of a camel? The pandemic does not last for just one or two days. Once they put on a protective suit, they must endure the heat and hunger. They also have courage of a lion because they are very brave. They show the responsibility that comes with their profession. I use simple words as I want to show my appreciation for them. Dialysis patient Oi Tai Hong writes cards and also raises funds. She wants to help Ziji purchase the medical supplies needed by hospitals. I heard that the hospitals lack oxygen generators. They face shortage of supplies, and a person had difficulty breathing. So my daughter raised funds from her friends. We raised this much money. I feel at ease. Helping people also makes me happy. The nurses at Penang Dialysis Center also have words for the frontline workers. 
I hope you do not regret choosing this profession because you are the chosen ones. You are our heroes. Please remember that. We're very happy that you're supporting us. You must take good care of yourselves and stay healthy. Studying in Malaysia at Sichuan Zhao School, second grader Pei Rojing took on the role of a vegetarian ambassador. During the pandemic, though she cannot promote vegetarianism face to face, she uses video calls to ask seniors at home to take on a vegetarian diet. Under the company of her mother, Pei Rojing and her cousin cook vegetarian cuisine together. I have a special thing to tell you today. I want to promote vegetarianism to you. Look at what I cooked. I made this myself. Being a second grade student in the Tsuji International School, Pei Rojing started promoting vegetarianism around the age of eight. Auntie, the pandemic is serious. We shouldn't eat too much meat. Afan auntie, you should start from a meal to two or three meals, even four. Another auntie has been going meatless for 10 days. She cooked meals for herself. After eating a meal, you can take a picture and send it to me. Show me what you've eaten today. My aunties are great. Let's work together to go meatless. Oh, okay. oh, Let us not kill small animals. If we catch them, their parents cannot find them. Though she is only 8 years old, her kind and loving heart goes beyond the age. Through pictures and writings, Pei Rojing hopes that more people may join the act of going vegetarian. In Tainan, to keep providing care packages to impoverished families in need, the act of kindness has warmed the hearts of parents and students. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>